Hey you guys, welcome to Charlotte, North Carolina for the Pollinator Foodie uh, kickoff. We're in day two of Pollinator Week and I'm Matt and I've got my buddy Jim and we're here to do some cooking using uh, foods that are produced through pollinations of pollinators. Um, we've got some great stuff, so Jim, let's tell them what we got here that we're cooking today. Well, um, we've, got, we've got some grilled chicken tenders that we did. Um, We've got some squash and zucchini and onions that we did on the grill as well. And then we got a fresh salad over here where we picked uh, off of Matt's tower garden. It's a hydroponic garden that we'll show you guys. Um, but we picked this all fresh and we're going to make a, a salad. And then we've got some homemade honey mustard sauce that we've made that you can either use as a salad dressing or you can dip your chicken tenders in it. So, and then over here we've also got some pork ribs that we did on the smoker as well. So, Cool. Well guys, we're going to take you outside and show you the grills and the tower gardens on how we prepared all this great food. Alright guys, so this is the tower gardens that Jim and I were talking about. Um, you can actually hear the pump just came on, so it feeds the water from the base up to the top and sort of rains over the roots. We don't have any soil or anything like that in here, it's all done through the nutrients of water. Uh, so Jim picked off some stuff earlier. So Jim, you want to talk about the tower on the left and I'll talk about the tower on the right? Yeah, we've got quite a selection over here. we got some tomatoes that aren't ripened up yet, but they will be. Uh, we've got some cabbage that we need to work on a little bit. We've got um, some different types of bib lettuce over here. We had some arugula. Um, we've got some squash growing down below and some zucchini plants, and so those will start producing. And, and then over on Matt's tower garden, he's got a couple oddball plants too. What do you got over there, Matt? Yeah, so down here on the bottom, we've got some couple different uh, variations of pumpkins. We've also got some watermelon growing on the back side. Got several different varieties of pepper plants. And what Jim was pointing out was my corn. So I'm actually growing corn out of the top of the garden. And I thought that was pretty cool. Especially as you can see the sun coming through it. Pretty neat. So this is where the magic happened earlier. So we've got a Kamado style cooker here. So we smoke the ribs at 225 degrees for five hours. And then we've got the gas cooker here, which cooks indirect, very similar to the Kamado as far as the cooking style. And this grill cooked at 400 degrees. We cooked all the vegetables, so the squash, zucchini, onions, as well as the chicken fingers on the, gra on the gas cooker. Any of these grills you guys can use and uh, cook delicious meals at any point in time. So pollinators is really important for when you're growing vegetables and making sure that you have a really good harvest of your crops. We've got some good examples of what a good pollinator of a vegetable looks like as well as what a bad example looks like. Jim, you want to talk through this with the... Sure. So, you know, we showed you the tower garden outside and we showed you some of the things that can grow on it. So. Matt's actually got one of his zucchinis that's done really well out there, and, it, and it's here. And uh, you'll see we've got some store-bought zucchini, and they look okay, but you know, when you grow your own vegetables, there's just something about it. Um, I've always made a joke that my, my kids come home and they want to go outside and get a snack off the tower garden, and that's getting them into vegetables, and they notice such a big difference in growing your own vegetables versus buying stuff in the store. But here's what the problem is, is if you don't have the pollinators participating, we get zucchini that look like these little guys. And these are not what we're expecting out of zucchini. Um, if the pollination doesn't cross-pollinate from the male and female plants, you don't get this nice zucchini. You get these instead. Yep, yep, absolutely. And then, same thing with tomatoes. So these are some store-bought tomatoes. But do you know how these are pollinated? Nope, but I'm sure you're gonna tell me. Yeah, they're self-pollinated. So you can actually go out there and shake the, the stems. So Matt, what? So, so help me understand, how, how did you get this one, but you have these as well? And they came off the same towers, right? Yes. So what did you have to do? So I took one of my wife's paintbrushes. She's an artist and does oil painting and those things. I asked her to have one of her old brushes, and I was a little bee out there in the mornings when the blooms opened up, <laughs> out there pollinating between the male and female blossoms to get that to grow the way it did. Um, I had about three of these two more of these and I kept wondering, I was like, when is it gonna keep growing? And then after I realized it's not, it's not gonna keep growing. So that's when I did some research and found out what I needed to do and decided to become a little bee. 
Now, Matt, you, you pollinated to get these kind of zucchini, but one of the things that I've been having a problem with on my tower garden is not, not on these tomatoes, but on mine, they start to get a black end on them. It's called blossom end rot. And that comes from a couple different things. One of them can be the lack of pollination. Another can be the lack of calcium, but uh, I'm still trying to work through that. I might have to get out there with my paintbrush too and, and, and paint yeah. my tomato plants. Yeah, you might have to. Well, everyone, we really appreciate you uh, watching this video and we hope everyone has a safe day and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks guys.